good morning. So I just really wanted to take a moment and check in with everyone because um, the whole COVID thing, this, that's why we started this devotional way back in March probably, um, was because of lockdown, because of COVID. Um, but I think none of us saw it lasting this long. I never thought we'd be on to our, our third devotional book um, and heading towards Christmas still with it really quite rumbling around. Um, so I kind of just wanted to check in with everyone because I know myself watching too much of the news can really get to me. But the news is rather depressing right now. There's not a lot of hope around. There's not a lot of light at the end of the tunnel. Um, and that's why I feel these devotionals are so good right now because Jesus is our hope. He is the light. He's the light of the world. In him, the Bible says, in God, in him, there is no darkness at all. And he doesn't change like shifting shadows. I like that scripture. Like, he never changes. But in the same instance, there's always something new for us to discover about him because he's so vast and so wonderful and so caring and so good that we can always dis discover something new and amazing about our God. But he is our hope. Where there seems to be no hope, he is our hope. Like I've said oftentimes, Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. If you need direction, he is the way. Look to Jesus. Don't try and figure it out on your own. He's the truth. If you are stuck in a situation, you need answers, you need to know which one. <laughs> Look to Jesus, he will guide you, and he's the life. If you're ill, if someone that you know is ill, or if you're struggling with health in any way, he is life. Bring Jesus into that situation. Take communion. Remember, he gave himself for you. But he, he is our hope. When all else is shaking around us, he's our firm foundation. And if anyone needs prayer, if anyone needs support of any kind, please get in touch with the elders and we'll do our best to help you. So today we are reading the right definition of righteousness. Galatians 2 verse 21 says, I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness came by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. What has a right understanding of your righteousness got to do with expecting good to happen to you today? Everything. Many believers associate righteousness with a list of things that they have to do, and if they fulfill the list, they feel righteous. Conversely, when they fail in terms of their behavior, they feel unrighteous. But this is the wrong definition and understanding of righteousness. Let's go back to what the Bible has to, stay, to say. Look at 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21. For he, God, made him, Jesus Christ, who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him, in Jesus Christ. We are not righteous because we do right, and praise God for that. <laughs> We became righteous because of what Jesus did for us at the cross. So we are not, we, we don't keep our righteousness by keep on doing right things. We became righteous the moment we put our trust in Jesus because Jesus is our righteousness. Righteousness therefore is not based on our right doing it is based entirely on Jesus' right doing. Christianity is not about doing right to become righteous. It's all about believing right in Jesus to become righteous. Do you realize that we have been rec reconditioned to associate being blessed with doing right? That's really interesting. I try with my kids not to reward good behavior with treats and things like that. If they get a really good school report, then yeah, we have like a nice meal or something like that. But um, I don't want them to associate getting with 
doing right. And conversely, if, they, if they're naughty, I don't take things away from them. I don't want them to feel like when they're bad, they lose stuff. Because that's not God, how God works in our life. Um, yeah, we've been conditioned to associate being blessed with doing right. Most belief systems are based on a system of merit, whereby you need to fulfill certain requirements. Give to the poor, do good to others, and care for the underprivileged to, un to attain a certain state of righteousness. It all sounds very noble, self-sacrificial, and appealing to our flesh, which likes to feel that our good works have earned us our righteousness. But God is not looking at your nobility, your sacrifices or good works to justify you. He is only interested in Jesus' humility at the cross. And I hope that for you, I know for me, that lifts a weight of burden from my shoulders. You know, some days, some days, oh, I just feel rubbish and it's just how it is. It's just one of those days where I don't get much done. I don't really see anyone. I don't really achieve anything. And before I know it, the day is done. And I feel like I've wasted the day or I could have done more, all those things. But actually, God is still God. He is still good and it is okay. It's okay to have those days where all goes wrong and you don't get much done. God won't judge us or look at us and say, well, you wasted that day. Actually, what we need to do is give ourselves a break and go, actually, yeah, I didn't feel great today. And that's okay. I just need to take care of myself and tomorrow will be better. It's all about Jesus' humility at the cross. He looks God looks at his son, perfect, his son's perfect sacrifice at Calvary to justify you and make you righteous. Attempting to be justified by your good works and trying to your best to keep the Ten Commandments to become righteous is to negate the cross of Jesus Christ. It is as good as saying, the cross is not enough to justify me. I need to depend on my own works, good works, to make myself clean and righteous before God. The Apostle Paul said, I do not frustrate the grace, that unmerited favour of God. For if righteousness came by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. My friend, consider carefully what Paul is saying here. He is effectively saying that if you are depending on your good works, your doing and your ability to keep perfectly the Ten Commandments to become righteous, then Jesus died for nothing. That's what in vain means, it means for nothing. So don't frustrate the grace of God by depending on your good works to make yourself righteous and put God on your side. Jesus' sacrifice is more than enough to justify you. And when you know that you are justified, justified. See, we say these words, I'm sorry, I'm stopping. We're saying righteousness and we're saying justified, but do we understand the depth of their meaning? Righteousness, we have right standing with God. So before we had Christ in our lives, the Bible says we were enemies with God. So we were, we were as far from God as you can be. But as soon as we gave our lives to Jesus, as soon as we became born again, we were brought into the household of God. We were called sons and daughters of the Most High. And we say God in such a familiar way, but he's almighty God. He created all that we see, the stars, the sun, the moon, the sea, all the creatures, all those beautiful flowers. He created them. He made them. He made you and I. And it's him that we call Abba. And that right standing with God is what can is the, is the reason we can call, call him Abba, because we now are family and justified. People say, um, just as if I'd never sinned, but it really is. It's, we are justified because the punishment for our sin was placed on Jesus. He took it for us. We have been justified because 
Jesus paid the price. So now we stand before Daddy God, Abba God, Almighty God, as though, well, to him, there is no sin in our life because Jesus paid for it all. So we stand righteous and justified before God Almighty, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, our Abba. That's what Jesus did for us. So Jesus' sacrifice is more than enough to justify you. And when you know that you are justified, when you know that God looks at you without spot and blemish, you can be confident that the unmerited favour of God is on your side and expect good to happen to you today. Our thought today, my being righteous is not based on my right doing. It is based entirely on Jesus' right doing. And our prayer today, Father, I thank you that my being righteous is not based on what I have done or not done, but what Jesus has done at the cross. I cease from my works to be righteous and simply rest in Jesus' finished work. Help me to be established in the revelation that Jesus' sacrifice alone enables me to have your unmerited favour on my side today. In Jesus' name. Amen. It's beautiful, isn't it? When we really stop, when we take away all the theology, all the big words, all the learnt traditions, actually when we, when we strip it all back and there's just you and Jesus, me and Jesus, just the two, and we see in his face the love he has for us, the compassion he has for us, that sacrifice he made for us, then we understand how much we're loved by him. We can only love because Christ first loved us and gave himself up for us. So look into his eyes today. If you can, just take a moment. Just sit quietly and just look at him just for a moment and just say, Jesus, Jesus, thank you. Thank you, you are with me. Thank you, I am never alone. Thank you that you hold me in your gentle, strong arms. Anyway, try and do that today, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.